G'day tubers, so it's go time on the 40 kilowatt hour test. Now, a few things first, a few disclaimers. It's not going to be 40 kilowatt hours, and if it is, I'll be bloody shocked. Um, I've got a few limitations I'd like to show you. And screen capture doesn't work on this computer, unfortunately, so I've got to hold the camera. If you go into settings in here and have a look just here, the maximum is 58.4 volts I can actually charge the batteries to. Um, so I can't get all the way up to 58.7, is it? Anyway, it's just shy. It's one. It's 4.17 uh, volts per cell. I would have loved to get that extra 0.3 per cell, but unfortunately I can't do it. Um, so we have got a very well balanced set of batteries at the moment. Um, the lowest cell is 15 and then we've got 17. Um, I was charging it before trying to get it really well balanced, but I've only been charging, I've only been um, balancing it for about 24 hours, so it's very close. It's, she's not perfect, but it's going to do, and let's face it, that's all you need for a balance anyway. You don't need, you don't need a perfection, and there's only, there's only, I think, one cell that's at that, that, that level, so there we have you. Rightio. Let me go back down to this little laptop. And of course this laptop does the screen capture um, just because that other computer is not capable of doing it, the video is not good enough. Go to watch power. Now up here I've got to change it. I want to charge source priority. I'm going to do it solar this time and then click apply. Okay. But I'm going to turn this off. So that's the solar is turned off and change that from utility to SBU, so solar, battery, and then utility. Click apply. I had to click on that, so that's transferred over. Close. Close that down. And we are in a discharging state. So people, we can get this test done. See how long it, let's do it. Cheers. There you go, just turn back to grid. Uh, the batteries went flat and um, as you'll see in a few seconds here, the actual um, shunt trip tripped. And now you lose everything on the screen because the shunt trip tripped and I had too small a fuse in it, which is a good test because now I know it works. So I had to replace the fuse so the Batrium software would kick back in again. So that's done, apart from a few little faults with that OBS software not crashing and losing 48 hours worth of data. Had to replace it with a few screenshots that I got from the old interwebs that I loaded up to the socials. But you get the idea anyway. So what do we get? We got 627 amp hours. Not bad. Of course, like I said in the beginning of the video, couldn't charge it to 4.2 volts. I can only get it to 4.17 volts. So we're missing a little bit from the top end. And we had two bad cells there at the end. Um, either end, I don't know what numbers they were, but two bad cells, so we replaced them out. We're going to get closer to our target, our 40 kilowatt hour target than what we got, but I'm still happy with the result. Let's go through them now. So we open up Google, go amp hour to kilowatt hour, and then we just select one amp hour to kilowatt conversion everyday calculations. Okay, so we've got amp hour rating. So what do we got to do first? First we'll need a calculator. So we've got 58.4 volts is what we started with. 
and 47.7 was what we ended with. Over the calculator on the computer, and we go 58.4 minus 47.7, and that gives us 10.07. We divide that by two, which gives us 5.35 volts. Now if we add 5.35 to the lowest, which is 47.7 equals, so 53.05 volts. So if we go the volts here, we go 53.05 volts. Up here we throw in the amp hours, which was 627.18, and we hit calculate. And that gives us 33.272 kilowatt hours. What can I do differently? Well, this time I had a whole heap of weird loads. Well, not weird, normal weekend loads. So on the weekend we vacuum the whole house. That's a thousand watts or something load. We also do the washing, two or three lots of washing. And I also threw it in the dryer rather than hanging it out on the clothesline to add that extra load. And we also did a lot of dishwashing. So there's a fair whack of extra load on this one. Um, as in the last video, I didn't do hot water. It didn't do the stove top and it didn't do the oven air conditioners and stuff isn't hooked up either but we don't use that this time of year anyway so tubers I'm not overly sure whether you got anything from that one I didn't I got pissed off I'm gonna do this right next one next load test remember when we did the four hour test and we did so four hours at a thousand watts and we got four kilowatt hours and then I run it for another 12 hours and got the extra extra one kilowatt hour and that's how I've always worked out my whole power wall. I did that on the first pack. What about if I get that same heater and we go for 40 kilowatt hours? We do everything we can to get 40 kilowatt hours. So I'll change out those two packs. I will charge the batteries all the way back to 4.17 and then we'll run the test at say a 3 to 500 watt load. Probably a 500 watt load so it gets it done a bit quicker and we'll just let it go until it's done. Now we'll also grab one of these so I'll put this on the um, on the actual PowerPoint itself, which will run the computer, uh, the lights, and the actual um, heater itself. And then we'll also have the Batrium uh, shunt, and that will allow us to work out how much the PIP uses maybe, or at least I think this is gonna be a little bit more accurate because this works out power factor and stuff as well. But anyway, tubers, thanks very much for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.